So I'm sitting here on Flagstaff Mountain, just a couple miles west of Boulder. Really, this is the easternmost expression of the Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains go this way to the west for hundreds of miles, but all of a sudden to my east, really starting with Boulder and, and the city of Denver in the background here, it's flat. Maybe a few hills there, here or there, a little bit of denuded topography, but it's pretty flat for a thousand miles till you get towards the Appalachians. One of the big questions in geology is what are the Rocky Mountains doing here so far from a plate boundary? We are ah, at least a thousand miles from the western edge of North America, the west edge on the coastline of California, Oregon, Washington, and we're multiple thousands from the east edge of North America where North American plate uh, heads off into the Atlantic Ocean. So a big question for geologists would be, what are these mountains doing here so far from a plate boundary? And we talk about this in the lectures associated with the Rocky Mountains. So I'm actually on a flat iron right here, a kind of a miniature flat iron, and behind me, behind this tree, is another kind of little flat iron. And Flagstaff Mountain is a great place to kind of up close, road comes up here, you could probably hear the cars in the background. Road comes up and we can look at these flat iron rocks and study them, think about them. This is the uplifted roots of the Rocky Mountains sitting right underneath the Flatiron. So we're here on, on Flagstaff Mountain, which is just a couple miles west of Boulder, Colorado and the University of Colorado campus. This is a mecca for rock climbers and uh, all the white on these rocks here are the, uh, is the chalk that rock climbers use. We put on our hands to kind of dry the hands a little bit uh, while we while we grab the rock. It's called bouldering. We're not using ropes here. So we have to be pretty careful. Sometimes we'll put big pads under us or somebody will watch us with their hands. And typically we're not climbing any more than uh, 10, 12 feet off the ground. But uh, yeah, we have to, have to watch where we're, where we're landing. So. This is one of my favorite rocks on Flagstaff Mountain called Beer Barrel Rock. And there's lots of different climbing routes on it. I'm actually kind of doing a little bit of a hybrid here. There's a couple different standard climbs. And the rock is super solid. Nothing breaks. And the holds are really fun to grab because they're deep in cut. And it makes it so you can climb something that's even overhanging pretty easily. And we'll put a little of this white gymnastic chalk on, which we all use to dry our hands off while we're climbing. And you don't want to do this on a really hot, greasy day. But this is pretty nice out right now. The hardest part, crawling up here. A little slopey. All right. the top of Beer Barrel Rock. Whoa, I could have come up the easy way. So I've just come up the really steep side of this rock, which is the side on the west. And now I've got this relatively low angle, much easier angled side to come down on the east side of the rock. Beer Barrel Rock that I've just climbed is a miniature flat iron.
It's still pretty smooth, so I've got to be somewhat careful. And I'm wearing my my sticky shoes, sticky soled uh, rock climbing shoes here, which are going to be helpful on this rock getting down. Yay. So Flagstaff Mountain has loads of these miniature flat irons, but behind me is the first flat iron, one of the big flat irons that sits up above Boulder, made out of the... And you can see on the side of the first flat iron, all these layers that tilt off to the east, kind of like shingles sitting like this. That's what these rocks are too. But the cool thing about this rock is this is the fountain formation. And again, this is a miniature flat iron we're looking at here. Some of the rock, some of the holes on the rock are actually pieces of the bedding planes. In other words, this is rock that was deposited in ancient rivers and streams, layer after layer after layer, and then later tilted and it's these surfaces between the layers that make for really good handholds. The handholds on fountain formation rock, the rock of the flat irons, are not just bedding plane surfaces, but we've got really cool chunks in here, cobbles, angular fragments that were part of the sediment being deposited. Let's take a closer look. This is a good view of the fountain formation, just a little piece of, uh, of the rock here. The bedding surfaces kind of go like this. You can see little ribbed regions. These are the, the surfaces on which sediment was deposited and later tilted. But also you can see these big chunks that are really characteristic of the flat iron or fountain formation rock. Rocks that have big angular chunks are either conglomerate or breccia. And really the flat irons are kind of a combination, the, the rounded pieces that are more characteristic of conglomerates, the angular pieces that are characteristic of breccia. But in either case, this is a high energy environment. This is a stream that was not moving really slowly and meandering, but it was a, a rushing river that was coming out of a mountain range. And that's the key to understanding the history of the Rocky Mountains using the fountain formation. The fountain formation, because of its angular particles, also because it contains a lot of the mineral feldspar that tends to erode into clay if it's subaerially weathered for a long time, those features suggest that this was rapidly accumulated, rapidly sealed off rock. It's a marker of an ancient range, the ancestral Rocky Mountains that existed around 290, 295 million years ago, just before the beginning of dinosaur time, late Paleozoic. The cool thing about the fountain formation and flat iron rock is that it really tells a tale of two mountain ranges. The rock itself, this conglomerate filled with feldspar, big angular particles. That's telling us of the erosion of the ancestral Rockies. Again, 295, maybe close to 300 million years ago. But these rocks were originally deposited flat lying or nearly flat lying. Now they're tilted into these flat iron features with high angle bedding. That happened much later, really at the end of dinosaur time, around 70 million to 45 million years ago during what's called the Laramide orogeny. Ancestral Rockies deposit Laramide orogeny or mountain building phase, the tilting. 